Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, we're very excited to have passed a milestone of 20,000 subscribers recently. So thank you very much to everybody who's subscribed and to those who haven't, what are you waiting for? But um, today I'm going to have a look at a puzzle sent in by one of our subscribers, Nick Bolton, who's asked, how do you go about this one? And uh, I'm going to have a, have a go at it. Um, Simon says he thinks it might suit my style, which I take as an insult that suggests that um, he thinks it would benefit from making a choice and going with it, or what he calls guessing. So we'll have a look at this and see how we get along. So looking at the top row to start, there's actually, look, we've got eight, one, and four to fill in at the top. This is actually a naked single because there's eight and four in the same column. So a one goes in there. Now we have four and eight in the other two. In fact, that's sorry, that's resolved by the four below that eight. The four down here fixes those two, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, if we look at these two sixes, that tells us there's a six up here. The six in columns eight and nine both rule out the other squares in that box and um, the eights across the middle, we've got eight there and eight there, and this eight finally limits that cell, so in this right hand box there must be an eight there. Now that allows us to use the ones in that column of boxes. Um, now what else have we got? Ah, oh, that one is very useful because in this central box which had seven digits in to begin with, there was only a nine and a one to place, and now we've got an idea of which goes where, so we can resolve those. Um, I'm going to start using some notation in a minute, as I nearly did at the beginning. Seven, three, four, one, nine, six must be either here or here in this box. They're the only two places it could go because of that six ruling out that square along the bottom row. So now nine must be either here or here, um, five in the middle, either there, there, what else have we got? Ah, oh, two in this box has to be in one of these two positions. So remember, this doesn't mean that this cell must be a two or a five, but I'm working out where the, in this box, where are the possible places for twos and fives. Now, Three. Ah, we've actually got a three here and a three here. So three in one of those two, and that one tells us which cell fills in a three. One of these is a two. There must be a five in one of the bottom pair. Um, what else? Oh, a four, either here or here. So therefore a four, either here or here. Four again, down in the bottom central box, one of those two positions. Eight in one of the corners of this box. Can you see why? Because of this eight and this eight. And where the givens are placed, the only two remaining cells that could be an eight are those two. And in fact, the eight at the top is limited to two places as well. Six is one of those two cells in that box. Nine could be in row four or five here. Um, and nine either one of those two cells in the central row of that box. Ah, this one, four, two, one, six, eight, five, seven, that's three, nine. Six here is fixed there. Um, actually, that six has probably been fixed for a while. You might have spotted that and been urging me to put it in already. Got there in the end. Three must be there or there in that box. Four. So we're making quite good progress here. We're certainly not closing in or anything on a finish, but um, it does, hasn't seemed too difficult so far, but I'm beginning to get a bit bogged down here now. 
not quite ready to um, start the guesswork, but getting close to that point. And believe me, I don't always um, end up bifurcating or, or having a guess in a puzzle, only when it really feels like it's come to a bit of a dead end without it. Um, seven, three, six, five. Ooh, seven must be either here or in this cell. And one, clearly either there or there. Now this box is getting a bit full. Six, eight, one, two, five, seven, all resolved. Oh, that's interesting. Now we've got a three, nine pair, and that's resolved by this three. Oh, in fact, this cell here has been a naked single for a while, I expect, probably since the one there. So that's a nine, and that resolves the nine up here. That's quite handy. Um, so we're going quite well now. This must be a three. It's become a naked single again, so it was probably a hidden single before. That's not a three. This must be the three down there, and a three in one of the top two cells in that box. Now I think we're running out a bit of opportunities. So what I'm going to focus on is not the pairs that I have noted, but possibilities that arise elsewhere. And in this column here, column two, we've got seven of the digits in black. We've got seven of them determined. So the other two must be one and four in some order. And if it was one here and a four here, let's see how we'd get on with that. So actually, before I do that, I'm just going to take a quick picture of the grid because if this goes wrong, I want to be able to come back to where I was when I made the choice. So I'm going to put in a 1 there and a 4 there. And that resolves the 4 here. That resolves 9. So that's quite decent progress. That puts a 9 up here. Um, 4, 6, 7, 8, 3. There must be a 1 on this side. In that case, 5, 9, 1, 7 there. That's not necessarily solving anything. Um, what else have we got? Ah, oh, look, these must be, so in this column we've already got 13749 and in the box we've got 58. So that fixes 26 there, which allows us to make 85 down here. This is a 6, that's a 2. Um, these ones are 1, 8, and there's an 8 over there, so we know the order. And, you know, although it's a guess, we've got very, very unstuck in a way. We can now really kind of fly along. Um, these are 5, 4, 7, these are 1, 8. And now, look, it's gone wrong, because here we need a 1 and a 7 because of the other numbers in the box, and we've just put a 1 in the same row. So that's clearly not right. Let's forget this grid and switch over to the other one where we now know it's not one and four, so it must be four and one in that order. And let's assume that's going to help us a bit more. There's either a one there. Um, that one could be... Okay, I'm not going to fill those in because I wouldn't be able to see it. One, six, seven, nine, five, three, four now must be up the side, either there or there, and that puts four here in one of those two, so either there or there. Um, let's see, eight, four, three, nine, six, one of those is a seven, we knew that before. Um, come on, come on, how can we progress here? Surely something we did down here. Maybe that four. Yes, that four resolves this four. Yeah, that's useful. And that four. Well, in this box now, we've got some quite a few of the cells filled. Five and three in this row can't be there or there. So they must be a pair in those two cells. And that resolves the nine. 
So we get a seven there. Now we've got a one here. Nine, three, eight. That's seven. The only place it can go in the box now. Two and five. And as I say, whichever way you kind of chose to go as regards that one and four pair in column two, it does seem to unstick you quite well and you can kind of fly through the rest of the puzzle at that point. So everything I'm doing now is pretty much predetermined by what we've achieved already. Four, nine, three, seven, five. No, I can't see where to go there. Um, oh, three and five have been resolved clearly. Six, three, eight, five, eight, three, nine, five, four. So I hope it doesn't kind of disappoint you as a solving video because I know some people tune in to see exotic techniques of uh, X wings and swordfishes and the really clever ways to solve. But sometimes the way to solve a puzzle is just to get going, just to unstick it and. Uh, Whatever means it takes, I find that that's the enjoyable way to get a puzzle solved. So um, not maybe one for the hard-headed logicians, but still, I think, an entertaining puzzle. I mean, I like the setup of the puzzle. It, it worked very well. It got to a particular point. Then you kind of had to decide how you were going to progress after that. And whichever way you progressed, funnily enough, the puzzle got pretty straightforward. Now, obviously, the important thing, if you are going to bifurcate like that, is to make sure you spot when it goes wrong. It's possible that you saw something that had gone wrong before the one I did, but uh, that certainly was one way of it working. And there we go. That's that puzzle solved. Um, interesting puzzle, Nick. You know, you may have been hoping for something a little more scientific than kind of flying through it in either of two ways, but that's one way to get the puzzle solved. And... Uh, I hope that has at least enlightened you as to how I'd solved the puzzle. Um, thanks very much for sending it in. We do encourage you to uh, send in puzzles for us. We're more likely, as always, to uh, puzzle to publish videos about puzzles from people who are sponsoring us on Patreon, where we're also supplying additional content, as you may know by now. And um, you're very welcome to all of our videos. So thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic.